Good morning, friends. It's lovely to be with you this morning as we reflect on the weight as well as uh, taking time to pray together. We are reading from the Gospel of Matthew, Gospel of Matthew chapter 19, reading from verse 23 to verse 30. It's Matthew 19, reading from verse 23 to verse 30. Um, listen to the word of God. Then Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you the truth. It is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples hear this, they were greatly astonished and asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Jesus answered, Peter answered him, We have left everything to follow you. What then will, what then will there be for us? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth. At the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or fathers or mothers or children or fields for my sake will receive a hundred times as much and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last and many who are last will be first. May the Lord bless to us the reading of his word now and always. Amen. Dear friends, something fell from, from my table, so I had to pick it up. We have read from Matthew 19, verses 23 to verse 30. And a beautiful piece that um, we read in Matthew and some of those encouraging um, statement that Jesus will make. And maybe if in your life you are dealing with a very difficult situation or maybe facing a giant a situation that is that is complex um situation where you don't see your way clearly maybe you have prayed about it and and things are not coming right things are not turning to the way you would have loved them to turn. Maybe you have prayed about the situation and you might have resigned yourself to the fact that God is not listening to what you say. Um, because you don't see any answer um, coming out of what you are dealing with, what you are facing. And, and many times when we, when we hit this place, we think that God is not listening. God is not on our side. God does not understand what we are going through. And you might, talk, you might have told yourself that there is no way that this situation is going to be resolved. And whatever your situation, 
whatever we face in our lives. One thing that we know is that the, the living Christ is, is talking to each and every situation that, that we face. He, he is not silent about things that we are going through. He is not silent on, on issues that we are facing, that we are grappling with. Um, there is always a message that the Lord will want us to, to receive and to understand. And he gave us this so that we can, we can change our attitude. Maybe when we see hope, where we could only see hopelessness. He helped us to be able to have the spirit of, of expectancy, knowing that he is in control and, and he is in charge. And where maybe hope might have diminished, he is able to resurrect that. Where life and boredom, even monotony, might have stifled um, things that we were hoping and aspiring to get, he is able to rekindle the vision and, and put us in a place where we, this, where we see things quite differently because his indwelling presence is with us all the time so in Matthew 19 verse 23 to 30 maybe I will use a few verses of that Jesus tells his disciples that it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter into the kingdom of God. And in this analogy, Jesus was referring to a familiar situation that will be, will be understood by by his hearers and this is the situation he 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 cites the narrow and the low gates that were part of the city wall which travelers will normally use um and and after dark when the public gates were closed it was a challenge to go into to go into the city um, because for a person who was a normal sized person um, they will have to lower himself so that they can enter through the gate and maybe lower and and go under so that they can be able to move in um, through the gate. Or if it was a camel, a camel will literally have to kneel and to crawl through the gate. And in, in, this, um, in this analogy, he, he wants to highlight how uneasy it is and how difficult it can be to maneuver those movements to enter into the city. And sometimes one will just pull and say, impossible, I can't do that. It can't happen. And he says that, but there is one thing that we forget, that even the giants, even the difficult situation, even things that appears to be 
to be impossible. For God, it is not. Men can look at things and say that there is no way. There is no way here. I don't see my way clearly. It can't be done. But God, with God, Jesus said, with God, there is nothing that is not possible. With God, everything, everything is possible. So if you have to pin your trust, if your hope has to be in someone, it has to be in someone who is able to do the impossible. Someone who, who is not get tired by your situation, by whatever you are going through, by things that you are dealing with in your life, by things that you are confronting in your life. No matter how difficult and insurmountable they might appear to be, with God it is possible. With God, everything is possible. With God, everything can be done. With God, there is nothing that is too difficult for him. There is nothing that is too small for him that he cannot. There is nothing that is too big for him that he cannot respond. He knows he understand and he has he has a good intention about our lives he has in his heart plan for whatever is good for us. So God does not sit in heaven, sit in glory, and his intention is to make things difficult for us. No. He wants us to feel blessed. He wants us to see his glory, to understand um, and see how he intervenes in the particular situations that we are going through in our lives. I pray that you will not allow anything to stand between you and God. That you, you will always see God who is on your side and that nothing will prevent you from giving him the worship that is due to him. The God who loves, the God who cares deeply for you, the God who respond to any plight and any situation that you go through. Uh, the modern hymn writer F. Pratt Green gives uh, this assurance in one of his hymns. When our confidence is shaken, in belief we thought secure, when the spirit in its sickness seeks but cannot find a cure, God is active in the tensions of faith not yet matured. Whatever yeah, the spiritual state you are going through and whatever you it is uh, that you might feel about God. Remember that he does not change. He has not changed. And his ability not to change is manifested 
in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. He took our place at Calvary so that he could unburden us of the load that we were carrying. Pain, disappointment, uncertainty, betrayals, lack of love, lack of compassion, any challenge that might make this life very, very difficult to live. He has taken that on our behalf so that we can share in the glory with the Father who loves and cares for us deeply. I pray that he will just keep you company and that this assurance of his presence, the assurance of God who is able to do the impossible will overwhelm your life so that you hold on to his promises in whatever you do that you hold on to these promises. May the Lord bless you. Amen, friends. Let us pray. Let us um, spend time just lifting um, our situations and um, the things that we want to bring before God, let, let us pray. Father, we, we humble ourselves before your throne and we give you glory. We thank you that you, you are loving that you care for us deeply. We thank you, Father, that you always come alongside us and encourage and support us in the challenges that we face. We give you thanks for that. We praise your name. We glorify you, mighty God. You are in control of the universe, in control of each and every detail that we see in the universe. You control everything. Everything is under your hand and under your control. We thank you, Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for what he had done for us. We praise you that he endured the cross with its unspeakable humiliation and pain so that we might know the depth of your love in his love for us. We thank you, Father, for the knowledge that you have given to us. That the love that sent him to Calvary is the love that surrounds and support and lead us on. So as we give you glory, we take comfort in the knowledge that there is nothing 
that is impossible with you. Father, that we might look at things in life and see how difficult it is to overcome different situations. But here this morning in Matthew 19, 23 to 30, Jesus reminds his disciples that there is nothing, absolutely nothing impossible with you. That you, you are in control of life. You are sovereign. And you hold everything together. So, Father, we, we thank you for that. We thank you, Father, that there is no giant that it's not it's impossible for us to overcome because with you in you in your strength we are able to overcome anything that we face because we don't face them or we don't deal with issues by ourselves in our own strength. So we give you glory that whatever giant we face, be it in our relationships, in our marriages, in our families, with our siblings, with our friends, with our loved ones, with our colleagues, with our peers. There is nothing actually that is impossible for you, if the relationships are broken, if there is healing needed, thank you that you are able to do that. When there is hopelessness in the world, when nations arise against one another, when there are wars, disagreements, Nations wanting to overpower and dominate other nations. When a leader causes havoc and further encourages and fuel misunderstanding, and struggles and battles and wars. Thank you that that kind of situation it's not above you and outside of your reach to correct. Thank you that you are able. When we deal with ailing economies and around the world and we see people suffering and struggling, taking a heavy beating, struggle financially. When they look at life and see doors closed and a lot of impossible things, thank you that you are in control and remind us of it that we need to lean on you, to depend on you, to put our whole weight against you, the Father who loves and who cares deeply for his children. And so, Father, we, we pray for hope, for hope for our land, for the world. Thank you, Father, that you always remind us that you are in control. Father, 
uh, as we look around the world and we look at the state of the pandemic, we are witnesses of your healing and your intervention. And we just want to thank you for that. Thank you for where you have been with us, from the places where you have delivered us. We think of people, Father, who have been healed or people who are being healed from serious illnesses and, and joy and celebration that your hand is at work in the lives of people. And so, Father, we rejoice when we see your hand at work in the lives of people. That you always, uh, always fulfill your promises. Whatever you say, Father, always come to pass. And we hold on to this hope as we face the future with confidence, confidence of your presence and company. And so, Father, we pray for the Church of Jesus Christ. We, we just commit it to you. And we pray that it will continue to be a voice, a voice that is shouting from the wilderness, calling people to you. And so, Father, for us here at St. Mangos, we, we pray for this day, we pray for this coming days, especially tomorrow when we we cast the vision and look at where you want to take us in the coming year. And so we rejoice in knowing that we are your children, we belong to you, that you are our Father. That whatever we face in life, there is nothing impossible with you. So we pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us so that we can stand redeemed before your soul. Amen. Thank you, friends. What a joy it has been to be with you and that we could be together on this call. I pray God's blessings um, uh, in your life that you will experience him abundantly. Have a blessed, blessed week and, and the Lord holds you and strengthens you at this time. Amen.